Hi there, my name is Laura O'Grady, and I'm so glad that you're watching the digital recording of my capstone thesis project and thesis research. So before we get started, I'd love to ask, wherever you are right now, uh, I want you to reflect on how much sleep you got last night. Did you get a full eight hours? Uh, was there something stopping you from sleeping? Do you have an issue with sleep that you want to overcome? Um, well, you're not alone because one in three Americans apparently don't get enough sleep every night. And I think that this number is actually kind of low. Like everyone I talk to has some type of sleep issue or sleep thing or fascination that they want to figure out. And I am honored to talk about that this subject. I feel like it is a common denominator that connects us all. And hopefully through this presentation, you'll be inspired to get a little bit better night's rest tonight or making some virtual promise to me that you'll prioritize sleep. So thank you. So before I get into sleep, I wanted to talk about my thesis research focused on adult friendship in my particular research. And sleep is the representation of how we can take these friendship techniques and apply them to any exhibit or experience uh, to increase adult friendship. So when we talk about adult friendship, it's one of those things similar to sleep that falls off our priority list. When work and family get busy, we may forget to make time for friends. And uh, But the truth is both friendship and sleep have a huge impact on our well-being. But in particular, adult friendship throughout the pandemic too, there's been an increase in this, um, what's often labeled a loneliness epidemic. And it is difficult to find and maintain friendships in adulthood. It's often um, uh, people carry a lot of shame around their friendships. It's something that's seen as a marker of a, a strong person if you are able to keep good friends. Uh, so it can be something vulnerable to talk about. And that was partly why I wanted to focus on sleep and adult friendship and these two topics together. So I think designers also have an opportunity when designing exhibits and experiences to really think about friendship because Folks often come, they don't come alone to exhibits as much as they come with someone else. It's about 10% that people attend uh, exhibits and experiences alone. And if you're a design professional, you might be thinking, I go to museum exhibits alone all the time, and I do as well. But for the most majority of folks, they're coming with someone to have a special experience. And who they're bringing is also very special. We don't just casually invite a coworker that you don't know that well to an exhibit. You're coming with someone you either... Uh, already love and know deeply, someone you want to get to know better, someone from out of town and you're looking for to share a unique experience in your city. Um, and with this idea that they're attending exhibits and experiences often with someone, we should be thinking about how we're designing with those folks. But I also think museums and experiences and exhibits are such pillars in our community that they can be a hub of places to meet a friend uh, if it's difficult to find a new friendship or spark um, some type of new relationship that it they can be community centers and hubs where folks can connect with like-minded people and spark new friendships so there's many opportunities here now something i want to call out is it's not there isn't one size fits all solution for how to spark friendships in exhibits but there's many techniques and tactics so i'll call those out as we move through the sleep experience on ways that i was thinking about designing with adult friendship in mind so thinking about the sleep factory, I wanted to take the topic of sleep because it's a common denominator, something that we can all discuss and connect over, perfectly connecting to the idea of friendship. Uh, but I wanted to approach it in a way we haven't seen sleep focused on or talked about before. Uh, I wanted to create a factory experience that was a little bit quirky, a way that people can explore different galleries on their own, this self-guided tour with lots to uncover. And sleep itself is an elusive topic. Um, it's often misunderstood. So the idea of a factory creating more sleep uh, felt like a nice metaphor for trying to figure out how it all happens and how it all connects. And at the basis of it all, I wanted people to walk away with this idea that everyone deserves a good night's sleep. So the audience I wanted to focus on building on my adult friendship research was uh, two particular groups of adults in particular. Um, I wanted to focus on adults in their early or late 20s and early 30s um, and thinking about that moment in life as a time where uh, your priorities are shifting, you're trying to make big decisions about what the rest of your life might look like and having a good foundation of people around you to support you would be uh, influential as well as folks when they are in their late 50s and early 60s. And in this age group, uh, there might be reaching retirement. Um, children potentially have moved out and transitioned into adulthood. And this other reshift in identity about what this next chapter looks like. 
So I'm located in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada, and I'm from Canada and I was living in Ottawa before I moved to New York City for this program. And something that's cool about Ottawa is there's tons of amazing tourist attractions right downtown. Uh, I've located the Sleep Factory in the Byward Market, but a lot of these exhibits and, and um, locations for tourism involve the National Gallery of Canada, Parliament Hill, uh, the National Arts Centre, and in these spaces there's a very... Um, national and respectable uh, energy. So I think the sleep factory is a nice juxtaposition of the experiences someone might have throughout the day uh, exploring downtown Ottawa for tourism, as well as I think the sleep factory is something that visitors or locals themselves of Ottawa um, would be excited to attend uh, something new in the, the city, and I hope it would be incredibly popular. Uh, so the location, the venue itself is called... Um, was a previous chapter's location for any Canadians watching, you'll know the beloved bookstore. So I think that this bookstore location that's now vacant will be a really nice evolution for the building itself to have the sleep factory in, kind of like a continuation of bedtime stories. And it provides a fair amount of space to explore all the topics and connection to sleep I wanted to focus on. So my client is Casper Mattresses. Uh, Casper revolutionized the mattress industry in terms of having a primarily digital uh, focus of shopping and online experience. So their few brick and mortar stores really focus on experiential nature and how people experience their products, as well as they previously collaborated with Refinery29 Rooms. So I hope they would be very thrilled to do some type of immersive experience. So Project goals, when I was starting out, I was really thinking about increasing Casper's brand awareness as well as Ottawa's popularity as a tourist destination. I wanted visitors to really walk away with an, a, a strong understanding that a lack of sleep can be significantly detrimental to physical health, cognitive functions, and emotional well-being. And truly, I, by adding friendship into the goals of any project, uh, designers will come back to this idea again and again as they refer back to their goals. And so I wrote that there, visitors will experience connecting and bonding with people they came with as well as fellow guests. And by underlining this in, in your goals, it can be something that creativity can form as the project develops through multiple stages. So a look at the floor plan of the location. Uh, the experience itself will be, begin on the bottom floor, um, move to the top floor, as well as complete on the bottom floor. So I'll talk you through all of that. Uh, but an important call out while we're looking at the floor plan is just that there's a few flex spaces, uh, including a second entrance, which has a cafe, as well as an event space upstairs. And by having these kind of community spaces, um, as well as the fort building location that can take on multiple uses, it can really serve the community. So a quick note about my graphic approach for the design of the exhibit, I wanted to explore some of the science connected to sleep. So you'll notice these waves come from EEG scans uh, when sleep is being monitored, uh, as well as this kind of blurry effect on my text to explore the connection between what does it mean when you're falling asleep and you're waking up and things coming in and out of consciousness. So I've used, used that motif in many different areas, as well as Z's and humorous. Uh, yawning photos and there's something about even seeing a photo of a yawn as I developed this that I was yawning all the time I might feel one coming I'm trying to suppress it but yeah so it was a very fun exploration and I wanted this graphic approach to be very different than any um, sleep gummies brand or uh, a sleep um, mobile brand that you might see uh, out there I wanted it to be a little bit more electric and exciting than the traditional uh, sleep marketing we've seen now, an important comment I should make is by being located in Ottawa, I wanted the uh, all the graphics to be bilingual. Um, and the importance of this is to make it accessible to any visitor, as well as there is a French logo. So this is an overview of the exhibit, and I'll dive into it. Um, and we can call it specific areas as we go through. So the exterior design of the exhibit, I was inspired by the facade of many Casper uh, storefront locations where they have a whitewash as well as blue outlining. And I wanted to honor the kind of historic nature of the, the uh, neighborhood by not doing anything too elaborate, but it, you'll notice some smokestacks at the top to communicate that factory feel and create a sense of anticipation and excitement as a, a visitors arrive um, and that they'll know exactly where they're going. So when visitors enter, the entrance of the exhibit is very welcoming and elaborate. So they've had this transitionary period where they're coming out from the street, they know exactly where they are, and the strong front, uh, front desk there 
um, allows visitors to know exactly uh, exactly where to go when they begin their experience. So visitors can uh, change their shoes, as many people know in Canada, we don't wear shoes inside, for bunny slippers if they'd like, um, and check their coats. As well as you'll notice these hanging letters from the ceiling, depending on where you are, um, will be in focus or not in focus, telling you about the sleep factory. And this connects to that idea of falling in and out of sleep and consciousness. So visitors, when they do, they check in and get their bunny slippers and scan their time tickets, um, they will also check in on a digital screen. Now at this digital screen, will be a French and English option for checking in, and they'll answer a few questions to get their RFID bracelet. Now, these RFID bracelets, the color they get will connect to their sleep chronotype, so whether they're an early riser or a late at night owl. Um, so this will serve as a way to potentially be a conversation starter if people see that there's somebody that has a similar sleep chronotype to them throughout the experience, as well as the RFID bracelet bracelet will be a way that visitors can collect more information. As sleep is incredibly personal, there may be topics that they want to know more about in a targeted email campaign following the experience. So every five minutes, a staff member will let visitors enter into the experience or they'll go through a tunnel, uh, really marking the beginning of their journey and the sleep factory. So the first, ex the first experience when they arrive will be this pulse point introductory video. Now in the sleep factory, this is seen as a bit of a storage space where they're getting a, um, a staff like introduction to the work that is happening at the museum. So I recorded a video, which you could, you can find through my DD book link, um, where it's really just this vintage idea of an introduction to what sleep is and the sleep research that's been there. And this is a script on the side as well of the video if you'd like to pause to read. And it, it's all about introducing the weirdness of sleep itself. The idea that we fall asleep for eight hours of a day, um, which is very vulnerable in a species that's so focused on survival in time and space. So this video pulse point would also act as a mechanism for controlling flow and making sure that there is a pacing throughout the experience. So when visitors enter into that first gallery, it's building on that video of what establishing what is sleep truly. Um, and when the, the first thing that they'll see is a hanging mattress using the Casper brand identity uh, woven in, um, which introduces them to the, the topic of this gallery. What happens when we sleep? And I used a question and why you might use a question in some of your graphics is to promote conversation between visitors as they arrive. Have they ever had a, a thought about asking what happens when we sleep? Um, and if visitors are moving through the gallery quickly, this brief question can lead to conversation and reflection between visitors themselves. So in this gallery, there are many different activations, but there'll be a particular memory activation that talks to the link of how the primary function that scientists believe sleep is for is for um, memory organization and retention. So this activity will prompt visitors to think about a time that they valued and cherished a loved one um, and think about a memory that's important to them, thus connecting the idea of sleep to um, gratitude and valuing our relationships. In the next gallery, this is called Cause for Alarm, and this focus is really bringing together different activities and interactives that are all about play and playing with multiple visitors and challenging one another. So there is a way that visitors can uh, test their driving when they're on high sleep or good, great sleep and also low sleep, and they can compete with one another. They can also play the games alone, um, as well as uh, activities that connect to puzzles um, in connection to sleep's increase in problem solving, uh, as well as information about how sleep impacts our physical, emotional, and cognitive well-being. So there also will be a media playback here where you can think about how emotions impact our sleep, and visitors can talk about times where they were low on sleep, and potentially uh, interpreted a situation in a heightened emotional way than they would have if they were on better night's sleep. So in this gallery, there's also a door off to the side that says enter at your own risk. And in that space, it is um, a back alley of the museum or of the exhibit where these creatures, animatronic creatures are stored um, and, and studied by scientists. And these creatures would be designed using animatronics to represent different sleep issues that can't be overcome um, 
when it comes to having a better bedtime routine. So it's important to call these out for visitors to know that there are certain issues connected to sleep that they need to take a more proactive approach in terms of working with healthcare facilitators to overcome. For example, restless leg syndrome or sleep paralysis or insomnia, that's something that they might need external help to overcome. And in these spaces, having some unique, weird, uh, quirky energy where visitors can talk about what they're seeing, uh, there can be sound effects as they approach the monsters, uh, this idea of having a third thing that brings people together. When it's something odd that they're uh, observing together, folks tend to talk to one another about what they're seeing and, and notes specific details that they've observed. So moving out of the health gallery, I wanted to provide an opportunity where uh, visitors can connect with the power of sleep in terms of uh, a choice that can improve our entire world. I think there's a magical opportunity that if every single person is getting a great night's sleep, we have an increase in uh, a healthier population, uh, a more creative population, and a population that doesn't make as many mistakes. Um, so in this area, it's really talking about the power of a good night's sleep for improving our universe and this connection to the brain and the universe and drawing that similarity. Now, in this area, I have a few spaces where multi-person seating uh, allows for sharing that experience together and observing something together in terms of physical closeness and conversation and reflection and uh, um, connection. So as visitors transition from the brain room, they move into this inter, inter space where they are allowed, there's more seating as well for more discussion and conversation, as well as they can either take the escalator upstairs to the upstairs galleries or take the elevator. Now, I just wanted to call out my wayfinding here. I wanted to bring in the Casper mattress by having acrylic casings shaped like mattresses with some of the ways that they build mattresses into the wayfinding choice. Um, so that's just another way we're bringing in the subtle brand awareness of Casper. As visitors move upstairs, the galleries, uh, the first challenge that they can participate in is with a small group. And as they um, use this challenge to connect with one another, um, this is almost like in the factory, our case studies place where folks are being observed for sleep research. And visitors are tasked with participating in this research uh, by going through this experience. So this experience, they may come across it with the people that they're with or with a couple strangers that are at the museum as well. And in each room, there is a case study in connection to someone struggling to get to sleep and the issue that they may be working towards. Um, and by having people play together and problem solve together, they're able to connect and collaborate in new ways, as well as establish new memories to connect, uh, to keep with them and cherish with them over time. So to really quickly move through each of these challenges, the first challenge addresses the idea of blue light and boundaries and connection to work. So visitors will be tasked with responding to as many messages from a boss for an employee as possible. In the next room, there is a connection between a sleeping baby and new parents. And the idea is visitors have to get by really quietly in a certain amount of time without waking the baby. In the third room, there'll be a college student who's dealing with an overwhelming amount of stress, and that's impacting their sleep. So the activity itself will involve trying to balance all sorts of things on a large plate and increasing or in connection to the metaphor and balancing sleep at the very top of that. To move on to the next room, visitors will be trying to understand and connect uh, a teen's school schedule while acknowledging their delayed sleep phase syndrome. Um, and so they'll have an increased sense of empathy for teenagers uh, and the struggle that they often have in connection to sleep. The next room is a little bit more somber and it's asking visitors to really sit with the question of uh, what would it, the experience be like trying to find sleep when it comes to um, if they were experiencing homelessness. So this moment is a pause and a sense for um, empathy building as well and could potentially be a collaboration with the Sleep Factory and Shepherds of Good Hope or other organizations in Ottawa uh, that protect folks experiencing homelessness. Moving away from that, um, visitors would have a challenge where they're trying to finish the famous words to children's stories connecting to nostalgia that adults uh, in our audience may have as well as challenging uh, that intergener intergenerational collaboration. Um, and in the following area, there will be a mini pickleball court uh, where visitors can just play a game of pickleball as they learn about the importance of physical activity for getting good quality night's sleep, especially in old age. So another gallery upstairs is the In Your Dreams 
area. And in the factory, this would be the creative experimental corner um, where we're really learning about the connection between creativity and dreams. Now, there would be some activities in this area where visitors can design dreams for one another, write about the dreams that they have had, uh, and connect and share in interesting stories, as well as learn some tactics for lucid dreaming. And there's something about dreams that we already all, all discuss. It, it's a natural opening conversation starter of strange reoccurring dream. Um, yes, so that's that space. Uh, another space we have upstairs is around the world in 40 wings. Uh, this is a connection between sleep is a common denominator across the world, um, but also learning about some of those interesting facts. And this would be a research zone in the factory where we talk about cultural differences. So there's so much about sleep that's very interesting around the world. Um, you know, the use of worry dolls in Guatemala, putting them under your pillow, uh, where the first pajamas were created that we know today, um, as well as who gets the most sleep and the least sleep in the world. Um, and it can be a conversation component where people can share different cultural differences that exist in their own families, as well as um, potentially techniques that they've never tried or thought of that might be appealing to them. So upstairs, there's also an event space and a flex space for different opportunities for reflection. So visitors have consumed so many much information at this point uh, that they can have a chance to have a discussion about how it might change or influence their life. Um, this space can also be used for events uh, as the programming of the space continues to elaborate and grow. There also is a dream journal and space to reflect on dreams continuing from our dream space. So the final gallery upstairs is really focusing on giving visitors a chance to, to test all the different potential um, ways they could uh, adjust their bedtime routine, encur encouraging the smells and calming audios, new sleep technology, pajama fabrics. And this is really a sensory exploration uh, where they can use those RFID bracelets to record what really um, sticks out to them. Uh, and in this place, it's a, a lot of... Uh, um, opportunity for discussion with the folks that they're with, uh, whether they agree about a smell being relaxing or they disagree about their thoughts about AM ASMR. Uh, and this is really just a sparking conversation, uh, play and sharing in the space. So fort building is our final uh, part of the traditional experience of the sleep factory. Visitors here will work with one another to really create and play with Casper's uh, products, um, building a fort, learning about the types of mattresses, why they might want a firm mattress or a soft mattress. And in many mattress stores, you don't get the experience to actually jump on the mattresses as much as you'd like. So in this space, you can definitely do that. Similar to the event space upstairs, this is a flex space. It can double as a community space where movie nights, yoga classes, staff meetings, where everyone pulls out the pillows and comfortably reflects on how the experience can be stronger. Um, and here, really, you can use those Casper products, including their um, night light, their removable night light uh, products, uh, and pillows and blankets and, and all sorts. And it was very fun shopping for the ideal supplies for um, what would make a great uh, pillow fort. So additionally in the space, we have a store where people can purchase mattresses and items connected to Casper, making sure that they can have any of their needs that they may, they may be needing met. Uh, at the Sleep Factory store, there will also be opportunities to buy swag in particular connection to the Sleep Factory experience. So whether that's pajamas that match the branding with Zeds on them, dream journals, uh, or a button that connects to this eight hour pledge, challenging them to try and get eight hours as much as possible every single night. Um, additionally, there is a, a Casper Cafe, and the cafe is really important to um, allow visitors to have this space that's not as heavily designed, um, but is comfortable for them to be in, that connects to some of the themes of um, the Sleep Factory itself. Uh, there were a few discussions about not so selling um, caffeine until afternoon, but I've gotten some pushback that said you have to sell it until 2 p.m., but there will also be warm milk or chamomile tea available. Um, and in this space, there's an important element of friendship development, just having not designed, not too heavily designed spaces that allow for conversation and reflection where everyone is welcome. And it can be a space they come to again and again. So thank you so much for listening to me talk through the experience. And I, I just wanted to say that for the Sleep Factory, this is a very just beginning spark of how this uh, space could exist for serving the needs of Ottawa's community, um, but also inviting people back again and again uh, to have new experiences with their friends that they attend with, as well as meeting new friends. So a large part of research is time spent together to increase friendship. So by having events that are um, inviting guests to come back, 
uh, such as having, um, you know, pillow fight yoga, support for specific sleep disorders, uh, circadian rhythm and blues nights, um, working on soundscape design for their own sleep soundscape. Um, this creates this kind of repetitive relationship with the space where folks can meet like-minded people that share similar interests. Thank you so much for watching my sleep factory walkthrough and talking about adult friendship with me today. And I just wanted to hammer home uh, for designers out there by thinking about friendship early on in your experience, uh, by providing opportunities for connection, comfortable seating, uh, curio curiosity, sparking signage, as well as um, providing opportunities for people to just exist together and come back again and again and again. Uh, we can in increase adult the chances of adult friendship as well as create memories that last a long time for adults so overall thank you so much for listening in today if you have any questions or ideas at all about my project or my work um please reach out i'd be thrilled to hear any of your thoughts and i hope you get a good night's rest tonight and i hope you reach out to a friend that's meaningful to you and attend an exhibit or experience together so thank you so much have a great day and uh, i'm sure we'll be in touch <laughs>